Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming tonight and for our friends who are watching online. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we've got a nice evening of kirtan lined up tonight with uh, various kirtan leaders. So please uh, sit back and relax and enjoy it. And um, you know, if it ha so happens, you can get up and sway and dance and clap. That includes the people online. You can dance in your lounge room. Or if you're out at Coles or Woolies, you can start dancing there if you're listening to the, to the kirtan there. Um, so tonight, uh, I'm going to do a, a, a chant instead of our guided meditation tonight. I just felt like having a little bit of extra kirtan, so, uh, so I'll have a chant now instead of the, uh, the guided meditation.
chant-a-thon tonight, because um, all this month we are focusing on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the one who began this kirtan movement. So we'll have some more chanting in our chant-a-thon. Yeah, we were advised that we should chant these holy names 24 hours a day, so at least we can do it for a couple of hours.
Beautiful. All right. Everybody's here. Thank you for coming. Or when you beast. Okay, so today we want to speak a little bit, as uh, Majalila Dasi said, a little bit about uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and about this practice of kirtan, the congregational chanting of these beautiful names, uh, a little bit about how they got here, and, um, and we have a special treat tonight as well, which we'll get to uh, after the end of my brief talk. Some people laugh. That is, why are they so unkind? <laughs> um, it was a, no, it was a life of friendship. <laughs> they know that I'm a liar. No. So before um, attempting to speak, uh, as I do every week, I'd like to take a moment to pay my uh, deep respects and my deep gratitude to my spiritual teacher, uh, Jagat Guru Siddhas Rupananda Paramahamsa and to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his associates and to the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shimati Siddha Swarupananda Paramahamsa Iti Namine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Shivasati Gaur Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So on, on the Tuesday just past, uh, we celebrated a great event actually in the history of the world. Even though some of you or many people in the world may not be aware of it, it was actually the advent or the appearance if you like, uh, in this world of a great uh, divine personality. And because of this person, divine personality's appearance in this world, we are all sitting here this afternoon practicing kirtan. In fact, this kirtan has spread all around the world. There is no continent or no country which has been untouched or is, and is now not familiar with this practice of kirtan. So the appearance last Tuesday was a full moon night. It's known as Gora Ponyama. So Ponyama means full moon. Gora is actually the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in case you've ever been wondering, and you know, you've been coming here for years and years, but you've never asked, who are these people? Well, it's just, I don't know, it's just something they do. They just have these big banners up. Not sure why, they look okay, they're kind of cool, they're kind of spiritual, right? But actually, these are great transcendental personalities. On my right, on your left here, this picture is of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, also known as Goranga. Goranga means, it, he's given this name Goranga because it means beautiful, effulgent, like a full golden moon. So this is the the appearance, this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has this beautiful spiritual golden effulgence so therefore it was known as Goranga. Uh, he appeared in this world and he was known as Nimai. He became known later on in his life when he became uh, a sannyas, took re renounced the order of life at the age of 24. So he appeared around about 530 odd years ago 34, 35 years ago, 535 years ago, I think it was, he appeared in India. It's described actually in the uh, yoga sacred text that he is an avatar of the supreme soul, of the supreme person, God. Avatar means the descent to this world from that eternal spiritual realm, uh, the supreme soul, from time to time, as he describes himself in the Bhagavad Gita. He appears in this world in his original transcendental form. Uh, and also different avatars or descents of the Supreme uh, in different forms also. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, the descent, he's an avatar of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. So he appeared here with a particular mission. 
And his mission was to ultimately, for our benefit, for the benefit of the suffering living beings in this world, who are away from their home. Every one of us here is actually homeless. You know when people are homeless, they have, they're not at home, they have nowhere to stay, so they're just kind of wandering all over the place. Right? It's a very sad situation. You know, many people are starving and they're lonely and in very difficult suffering condition, yeah? Homeless. So many people try to help the homeless people, give them some, you know, warm food or some shelter or take care of their medical needs, right? Out of compassion, we try and help the homeless people. So I'm here to inform you that we are all homeless people. Even though you may have somewhere to park your body at night and where you park your body may be comfortable, it may be warm and it may be safe. But this body that you have is not you. You are not this body. You are the eternal spiritual being. Eternal by nature. Blissful by nature. And you are now in a foreign place wandering through this material dimension. You have an original home. That original home is in the spiritual dimension experiencing loving exchange with the Supreme Soul. That is your real home. This is not your home. That is why we are suffering here. We're suffering from so many different things, right? What do we suffer from here? Or well, none of you are suffering. You're that deep in illusion that you actually think you're having a good time. I'm young. Look at this. I'm strong. Look at my six-pack, right? I'm smart, you know? Look how quickly I can play chess. I can play 15 people at one time and beat all of them. So we get kind of locked into this world thinking it is our home, trying to make a home here. But it all gets swept away. So we, uh, as homeless people, there's various things we suffer from. Birth, disease, the aging of the body, let me tell you, that's a good one. You're really going to enjoy that when it comes around. You know, like the wonders of old age. People who are old have an old body. And what, what I mean here is have an old body. You don't need to tell them too much about the wonders of old age because they're experiencing it. But those who are not in an old body yet, you cannot even tell them either. Because they cannot in any way comprehend the fun and all the beautiful things that happen with old age of the body. But don't, do not worry, you'll get to have your chance and you'll get to know it firsthand. But you know the biggest, the biggest suffering? Yes, birth is suffering, painful. Diseases are not fun. Old age... Despite the propaganda, it's not the golden years. It's a lie. They're lying to you. Do not believe them. Prepare now. This is not the case. And, of course, death means leaving the body behind. These are not fun. And they are a cause of distress. You know, and along with the different bruises of we experience in life, the different bumps and bruises, you know, love affairs that don't work out, jobs we don't get, so many different things all happen along the way. But the greatest suffering, even more than all of that, as suffering as that may be, you know, we try and find some way to work around it, you know, to overcome these problems. The greatest suffering is that we are away from our supreme friend. The greatest suffering, all sickness ultimately, is homesickness. We feel this in the form of loneliness. You may have a wonderful partner, a wonderful friend, should I say, wonderful children, is that? Is that a thing? So the parents are laughing. The kids are going, yeah, of course, <laughs> right? You may have wonderful parents, duh, duh. The ones that restrict me and don't let me do things and don't care for me and friends who stab... Anyway, <laughs> I'm heading down a dark hole here. But I laugh because I know what it is. When you know what it is, it's not a cause of anxiety. 
when you see it for what it is and you know the good news, then these things you can joke about. You know, sometimes people think you've been a bit negative, right? No, it's not at all. It's actually quite funny. If you know what it is and if you know the solution, then you really don't have to be overwhelmed by these things. So wisdom overcomes ignorance. So wisdom, aham brahmas me, I am spirit. I am not my ever-changing mind, material body. I am the eternal, beautiful, amazing spark of the supreme, beautiful soul. I am blissful. I am conscious, aware by nature. For me, there is never birth nor death. Never was there a time that I did not exist, nor will there ever be a time that I cease to exist. So that wisdom, that, that short excerpt of wisdom, removes, or it begins to remove. It doesn't fully remove. It's the beginning of the removal of the suffering we experience by uh, identifying oneself with this lump of meat. You know, we're more than a lump of meat. Do you know that? There's actually nothing really attractive about a lump of meat, right? And that's what we have. This guy's a lump of meat. This girl's a lump of meat. This is a lump of meat, right? Meat isn't attractive. You know, for all you vegetarians out there, you know, vegans, right? You, do, you want to avoid, you know, hunks of meat, right? Ugh! You know, you've got to walk by the, the meat section in the supermarket, you know, <gasps> take a deep breath, and you, you know, if you're going somewhere else, because you can't even stand the refrigerated smell of the meat, right? Well, be aware that everybody's walking around in a hunk of meat. So we should be, you know, no, don't touch me. <laughs> but we, the reason why it doesn't, we're not aware of that is because the pure soul, who is beautiful, effulgent, and, and aromatic, a beautiful aroma emanates from the spirit soul. So death is, there is no such thing as death with this wisdom. There is no such thing as fat and skinny, ugly, beautiful. There is a material only. Each one of us is a spark of the Supreme. And the real suffering that we have is that we are away from the Supreme. We are away from home. You're away from your dear most loved ones. This is the Krishna and all of the associates of Krishna or God. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of great compassion, seeing that we are all homeless, wandering away from home, we've even forgotten who we are, we've forgotten where our real home is, he has come to give us a ticket back home, free of charge, no strings attached. This ticket, how do we come back home? How do we become resituated in our natural, spiritual condition. This is described by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in harmony with the sacred yoga text as Hari Nama Sankirtan. Hari is one of the many unlimited names of the Supreme Soul. Hari, the Supreme Soul, Krishna, Hari, God has many names. Hari is one of the beautiful names. It means that Supreme Friend who cannot actually see, cannot, is, is moved out of pure love, spiritual love for all of us, his parts and parcels, suffering away from him. So he comes to take away the pain, the loneliness, the emptiness, the bruises of life. This is what Hari. It also means that the Supreme Person is so beautiful, so transcendentally attractive in every single way that... He is a thief who steals our heart. You know, you, talk, you hear about Cupid who shoots an arrow in the heart and the person is smitten. I think, is that what you heard? Google it if you don't know what it means. It's an old word. So Krishna, or God, is so transcendentally attractive and he is not different from his name. So that beauty is to be found in the transcendental name of the Supreme. So he comes to steal our hearts and the pain and suffering away from our hearts. So Hari Nama, the English word name comes from the Sanskrit Nama. Hari Nama Sankirtan. This is the 
the movement that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought with him when he descended 500 years ago. Sankirtan, Sankirtan, Sang, the root of it is Sangha. And Sangha means a group of people. Congregation is the English word we can use. Sankirtan. Kirtan means to speak, to enlighten, to say, to sing. So Hari Nama, the names of Hari, the names of God, sung Kirtan, sung in association with others. This is described as the, the uh, Yuga Dharma. The Yuga means this current age of quarrel and chaos. Dharma means that spiritual practice which is most accessible and most successful in this age of quarrel and chaos. So Hari Nama Sankirtan is the Yuga Dharma or the spiritual practice which is for every single living being because we can easily take up this practice, become purified at heart and mind. The troubles that are there in our life, the bruises of life, the emptiness, the loneliness, everything which is troubling us in our homeless condition can be completely removed when we immerse ourselves in Harinama Sankirtan. So he came to inaugurate this practice of congregational chanting of the names of Hari, the names of the Supreme. And this is actually, our, not only is it our ticket home, because we become resituated in our natural spiritual condition, and we begin to taste, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, we begin to taste that nectar for which we are always anxious. And that nectar is not peach nectar, it's not apricot nectar, it's not Jim Beam, it's not Foster's Lager. This is not the nectar that we are anxious for. This is a substitute for the real nectar. And the nectar is pure spiritual love for the Supreme and for all other living beings. And it is there in our hearts already. So Harinama Sankirtan uncovers this wisdom, this bliss, this nature of who I, my essence of who I am. So in the experience of Harinama Sankirtan, we are actually home in that experience. You know, many times, many times over the years, people will come up and say, why is it that sometimes I cry during kirtan? What is this? Well, the short explanation is that because you have been wandering away from home for so long and now you are home. Now you are home. And this is, brings such relief that one, sometimes one is very deeply touched by finding out their home again. So home is to be found in the congregational chanting. It's not just a means to another end. It is the means and the end simultaneously. Anyway, this is a whole different talk than what I plan to give. I, I, hope, I hope that it's all right. It's somehow they got taken there. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we celebrate his appearance as an avatar of the Supreme 530 odd years ago. And he brought these holy names. And he actually said, these names of the Supreme will spread throughout the whole globe to every town and village. So here we are on the village of the Gold Coast in Australia. And his prediction has become realized. So this, I'll finish off so we can go to the nicest part. That these transcendental names do not originate in this world. They are not made up by someone in this world. They are, the names of God are non-different from God. And they descend from that eternal spiritual realm to this world, unchanged, not touched by the material nature or energy. They descend to us through a line of self-realized spiritual masters transcendentalists who have received these names and then becoming purified by these transcendental names, they then, in all purity, pass those names on to others. And in this way, there is what is known as a spiritual sampradaya, a lineage 
of these great transcendentalist or spiritual acharyas, teachers by example, who out of compassion, as is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, are passing on these beautiful names. So we are very fortunate that in our sampradaya, our, tra- our disciplic line of spiritual teachers, we have received these names directly in line with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. So through this line of spiritual teachers, they are giving us, through oral reception, our home, our spiritual home. So it's described in the yoga text for the potency, the spiritual purity, beauty and potency to be there so we can experience this is that we must receive them from the lips of such a lover of the Supreme Person. And then we will be receiving that same gift, those same pure names, which will transform our very existence. And we will again experience being in our real home. We receive them through oral reception. Oral. Oral. The ears. So what I'd like to do now is I have two short video clips, audio tracks. One of my spiritual master's spiritual master, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, chanting this Maha Mantra, or this Hare Krishna Mantra. And then there is also a, a clip, an audio, of my spiritual master chanting this Maha Mantra. So what I would request from you is that we experience, we we will close our eyes if you like, although you can watch, but maybe close our eyes and listen, just listen to this, these transcendentalists who out of love for me, for you, are handing us this gift. So it is coming, it's described, they are chanting from their heart and that love in the form of the holy name is coming out of their mouth transcendental sound, not material sound, then we are receiving this gift, this transcendental sound through our ears. So we take it into our ears. It then goes into the mind, so we rest the mind. But then we invite Krishna, the name, into our very core of our heart and we hold in a deep spiritual embrace these beautiful names as these representatives these transcendentalists are trying to give us this gift and we embrace that gift fully by attentively listening and holding on to these beautiful names within your heart. So this is what I'd like to do if that's okay. So if you like, if you find it easier so you're not distracted, you can close your eyes and just listen. So each, it's about 10 minutes. So let us actually try this. In this way, receive fully this gift which has been given to us directly from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All right, Mr. Music. Bala Krishna Krishna Hare Hare Bala Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Bala Krishna Krishna Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare
Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Krishna Hare Hare Rama Hare
Hare Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama Rama Rama, Hare 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 Bhoom our chanters. So that's the greatest gift that we can give and that's the greatest gift that we can receive, we can be given. There is nothing greater. If someone give you a billion dollars and it would not even come close to that gift that we have been given. So please take that gift and uh, Share it with others because it won't run out. I know things of this world that uh, if you give it away, you don't have it. But if you give this away, you get to keep it and have more and more. So share this gift with others also.
Thank you. I think we got it. <laughs> Thank you. I was remembering during that chant that um, uh, it's not described, it can be experienced that when we, when we actually embrace Krishna's name deeply, madly, what is it? Truly. Truly. Yeah. Deeply, truly, madly <laughs> in our heart. It removes all that is troublesome from the heart. It's one of the effects of embracing the holy names. It removes everything which is troublesome from the heart. So let us embrace these names. Can we go a little bit over tonight? Is that all right? Just a little bit. So I want to do a little chant, get a chant, a chance to chant, and then Madhuri will finish it. With a beautiful song.
Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Haribo. 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 Okay, so you got time for one more? Yeah. Sure, you're not starving or anything? Be all right. Just a nice mellow one with Manjali Ladasi.
stunned. <laughs> this prayer that we sing at the end of every kirtan is written by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it is about the mood that we should be singing kirtan, the names of God, and uh, the actual state of our hearts. One should chant the holy names of the Lord in a humble state of mind, feeling one's That's all right. I, actually, the one thing came to mind at, just at the end of Majlila's chant. It's uh, described that actually the, in this Maha Mantra, this Hare Krishna Mantra, it's um, like hearing the transcendental flute of Krishna. So when the chanting is there, this is also the same sound as the transcendental flute playing of Krishna. And I was remembering there's a description in Vrindavan, the transcendental realm, 
where when Krishna would play his flute, so many living beings would enter their ears and it was described they would become stunned. They would become stunned upon hearing the transcendental flute of Krishna. And it's described that sometimes the calves would be drinking from their mother and that they, when hearing Krishna's flute they would become stunned and stop drinking. They were so stunned in love by hearing Krishna's flute. And all kinds of people would be stunned so much they would just stop in their tracks and be mesmerized by uh, Krishna's love emanating from his transcendental flute. So sometimes when we chant these names of Krishna, they also enter our ears and, and we may experience a little bit, just a little bit of that transcendental love that is there in the holy names. So I was just remembering that. Thank also, you. Um, Krishna's flute is just like birds. and It actually flies to our ears and builds a nest in our ears and lives there forever. So whatever may be going on in our lives, if things are going well and materially we're very happy, we should joyfully chant these names of God. You can do it congregationally, you can do it yourself, you can do it with others. You don't need to be in a special place to do it. These are transcendental names. And if you're really on a bummer and your so-called loved one just left you, chant these names of Krishna and you will become joyful because all unwanted things will be removed from your heart. One last thing. As we were listening earlier to our spiritual masters chanting so beautifully these names of Krishna, I remind, just thought I'd, rem I'd let you know that you can have these because the potency, the spiritual love that is there when such transcendentalist as Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and Jagat Guru Siddhashupananda Paramahamsa, when they are chanting these names of Krishna, Krishna is fully present there within this transcendental sound. The whole spiritual realm, including spiritual love, is there in these emanating from the lips, from the heart of such lovers of God. So we should as much as possible hear from such uh, transcendental representatives of Krishna's love. So in that in mind, we have a really nice CD called The Ocean of Love, which is our spiritual master singing this Maha Mantra. The whole album is him singing, as he did before, these beautiful names of Krishna. Now, many of you don't know what a CD player is or a CD. So we thought of that and we have put a download link. It's there in the CD, and in, in the cover. So you can download it to all of your devices and you can constantly be listening to this chanting, this uh, love song chanted by a lover of Krishna, such as our spiritual master. So I would like to highly recommend that you grab one. So you can have the CD. There's a beautiful picture of Gopal there as well. And there is also a picture of our spiritual master. But you'll find the link and you can download it. So you can constantly be immersed in the hearing and the chanting of, these, of this Maha Mantra as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has delivered it to you from these uh, lovers of Krishna. So please consider it if you don't have it already. Something that always strikes me that I heard is that the, the sound that we're hearing, the transcendental sound, is of course living, alive. It's spiritual energy, transcendental. And it's the very exact same sound that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chanted. It's been passed down orally from the heart of one lover of God to the next. So we're actually hearing the exact same sound that was chanted by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when we're hearing from our spiritual masters. It's not a Very potent. It's not a small thing. You might think, oh, it's pleasant. Oh, it's nice. It's actually more than pleasant. It's more than nice. Shall we do another one? <laughs> Well, I said at the beginning, right, we're supposed to chant 24 hours. No, we have to move. One day we should do a 24-hour kirtan. We should have a 24-hour kirtan. What do you think? You can bring your sleeping bag, you can stay awake for some of it, sleep through some others. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Get a whole bunch of kirtan leaders and just do a 24-hour 
Would any of you come if we had that? Three. Three people. Three people. Four, four people. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we'll have to do it before I die. I'd like to be part of that. So next week, speaking of kirtan, we have Prahlad and the chants. Friday. Friday and Sunday. And Sunday. It's a great weekend for kirtan. So uh, please come and um, he likes it when people dance. So be pumped. Yeah, bring your dancing shoes. But leave them outside. <laughs> 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 dancing you, feet allowed yeah that's why we have feet if you don't dance then you, you might lose your feet there's no there's no point in having feet if you don't dance to krishna's names that's the purpose of having feet and the purpose of having ears is to hear the holy names the only purpose for a mouth is to chant the holy names and the only purpose for a mind is to meditate on the holy names everything is connected to the holy names the only reason to eat this meal that you're getting served is it'll give you strength to chant the holy names. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Please stay seated and um, our wonderful helpers will bring you the meals. And if you have any special needs, please let them know. They can help you out. If you can help us with a donation, Carolyn is there to help uh, take cash or card. And if you can help clean up afterwards. Um, yeah, clean up. Afterwards, just in case you didn't hear that part. We'll be and, very um, appreciated. Be, and also, you might have forgotten, it's called the Ocean of Love. Grab one, please grab There should be 150 sold tonight. Haribo.